Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, September 18th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. One way an attacker is able to hide their activity is by either stopping or manipulating system logs. This, of course, is also possible on Windows. And Rob looked in today's diary into how to figure out if your Windows event logs have been manipulated. One way to do this is to look for gaps in the log ID sequence, which uh, should be sequential. But if someone removed log entries, then of course you will find gaps. Now you can do this via the GUI tools that sort of come with Windows, but that's a very labor intensive process in particular since it takes two or three mouse clicks for each individual log event to actually get to the ID that you need to compare. So he wrote a PowerShell script to accomplish this and you can use this to verify your logs. If you're interested, you can download the script from Rob's GitHub repository. Now, he warns that the script isn't very fast. It took him about three minutes to load the logs into a variable in the script. So it may take a little bit longer on a busy server. But uh, yeah, uh, let him know how it works and uh, if you find any interesting gaps in your logs. And back in 2013, Independent Security Evaluators, a Baltimore security consulting company, took a look at various small office, home office, so Soho, routers, and NAS devices. And well, uh, back in 2013, they found 52 vulnerabilities in them. So no real big surprise to anybody listening uh, to this podcast. But recently, they actually redid the study. They took, again, 30 different routers and NAS devices that are typically used sort of in these smaller networks. And well, uh, no, it didn't get better. And that's in line with other studies that I've talked about recently that basically prove that uh, over the last years, uh, these type of devices continue to be riddled with vulnerabilities. They found 125 different vulnerabilities across these 13 devices. What's probably even more concerning is that many of these vulnerabilities are pretty severe. For example, command injection in, existed in all but two of uh, these devices. Also, authentication bypass, authorization bypass, not quite as common, but it was about five devices out of the 13 that suffered from uh, these uh, two vulnerabilities. And then, of course, when you're looking at something like cross-site scripting, again, they found this in all but two of the devices they tested. The report published by ISE does include a lot of details about these vulnerabilities, including proof of concept code to exploit them. Many of them are associated with web-based admin interfaces for these devices. So first thing, as always, make sure that nobody from the outside is able to access any of these web-based admin interfaces. Even if you just patch them, there are likely some vulnerabilities of the caliber that IC is discussing here still left in these devices that just haven't been found yet. Some of this work was done over a year ago. Now the report was published now in parts because they tried to notify manufacturers about these issues, but some still haven't even acknowledged receiving these reports, like for example, Buffalo. In general, the response times were all over the place. Uh, there were others like for Trobo that didn't uh, respond. Now, Netgear is a little bit of a surprise here. Netgear is actually participating in a bug crowd. So they're participating in a bug bounty program here that should actually, and that's one purpose of these programs, smooth some of the interaction between researchers and the companies, but took them five months to actually acknowledge uh, the report and uh, then another three months to actually get a CVE number and such uh, from Netgear. On the other hand, the particular vulnerability reported to them had already been patched by the time the bug was acknowledged by them. So they probably have had other uh, reporters that submitted the same vulnerability. 
And if you own an HP printer and you installed the associated desktop software that comes with the printer, you may want to take a look at Robert Heaton's blog, who didn't just install the software, but also read the privacy policy. By default, uh, this application will communicate quite a bit of detail about the type of documents you are printing with HP, and you probably do want to revoke uh, these permissions, which isn't all that straightforward, according to Robert's blog. But if you can avoid it, probably best not to install applications like this on your system. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.